Hello and welcome to this video on basic subtractive synthesis. Uh, this video is designed for people who've started using synthesizers and they want to just have a better understanding of what all the controls do on it. Um, so I'm going to focus on uh, most of the common ones that you'll come across when trying to learn how to use a synthesizer. Uh, for the purposes of this demo I'm using a Roland System 1 uh, synthesizer. I've chosen this because it has most of the features that you'll find across uh, most synthesizers, most of the common ones, uh, and also they're relatively affordable as well so they're a great starter synth for people who just getting into it. Um, like I say, I'm not going to cover all of the uh, controls that are on it because some of them are unique to this synth, but I'll cover the most ones that you'll find on most synths that you're doing. Um, I'm going to be focusing on uh, four main areas. Uh, the first is the oscillator section, then we're going to be looking at the amp, then we'll look at the filter, uh, and then finally I'll look at the LFO section as well. And if you understand those four uh, synthesizer sections, then you should be able to uh, get to grips with any synth really. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's start with the oscillators. So we're going to begin by looking at the oscillator section. Uh, an oscillator is a very basic sound that you can begin with. It's a tone generator, something that creates the initial sound. Uh, and then using the other controls and the synthesizer, you can shape and sculpt those to make them into the more um, elaborate tones that you uh, might want to create. Um, on this particular synth, we have four uh, oscillators together. So it has two main oscillators there on the top of the mixer, um, a sub oscillator and also a noise oscillator. And and uh, using the mixer, you can adjust the various levels of them to bring them up to your taste. So at the moment, I have just got one oscillator up. And uh, so if we look at oscillator uh, one over here, so uh, most synthesizers, you'll have a choice of different types of oscillator that you can use. Um, a lot of commonly shared waveforms, and then usually on each synth, you'll probably have a couple that are maybe unique to them or a little bit different. So uh, for instance, on this synthesizer, we have six main uh, oscillators that we can choose. Um, this control underneath is called, uh, on the system one is called a color control, which will change the sort of um, the overall tone of it. You might find that's called a wave shape or or something else on another synthesizer, but I'll show you what that does as well as I'll go through the oscillators. So to run through the six main one on this one, so you have uh, the first three are very common and you'll probably find them on all synthesizers. So we have a sawtooth. Uh, you can change the wave shape of that using the color dial. Uh, next we have a square wave. Uh, then we have a triangle wave. And then the next three on this one are, I suppose, kind of unique to Roland, but um, a lot of other synthesizers, I suppose, might try and approximate these as well. So they have a super saw. Uh, it also has a super square. And lastly, it has a super triangle. Um, I'm going to go back to the saw wave just to stick with that. Uh, the next control over here, uh, which is labeled 64, 60, uh, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2. This is basically the octave, so it's the overall pitch that you have them in. So as I change it from uh, low... That changes the overall pitch uh, that the oscillator is set at. The reason it has uh, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2 uh, on this particular synth, um, on old uh, church organs, uh, they used to have, uh, say, a 64-foot pipe would, uh, would create a pitch at a certain a certain level, and a 32-inch pipe would do that uh, at a different pitch, and 16 and 8 and 4 and 2 and so on. So uh, it's uh, not uncommon on a lot of synthesizers to find the sort of octaves put in footage like that. So, um, But uh, other ones you might find it goes up in uh, increments of 12, so 12 semitones, so 12 semitones is an octave going up. Uh, but the, the basic uh, uh, outcome is the same, uh, that they have them at different pitches. So this is at uh, 32 um, at the moment. Uh, the nice thing is, obviously, is you can combine different oscillators at different pitches. So for instance, say if I uh, bring up the level of oscillator 2 at the same pitch of 32, I've now, I've now doubled the, uh, the volume of that because we've got two oscillators sort of working in unison at the same, same level. Similarly, I could drop down oscillator 2 to 64. Uh, so now we have two oscillators playing in, uh, in unison, but also playing an octave apart. So 
So you can use those to make kind of thicker sounds. So let's keep it on uh, 32. So we're both on um, 32 now. The other thing that you can do is you, then you can tune uh, uh, one of the oscillators separately. So on this one, oscillator two, we can tune that to be either uh, sharper or flatter. So um, why would you want to do that? Well, if you do it just a, a subtle bit, you can uh, make the sound a lot thicker. So at the moment when it's in together, Essentially, all oscillator two is just making the overall sound um, louder because it's just exactly the same tone as um, oscillator one. However, if I detune that down, you can hear the sound phasing in and out with each other, and that makes a, an overall thicker sound. Likewise, you could always pitch it up. So even though it's only slightly out of tune, it makes an overall much, much thicker sound. So that's so detuning and uh, tuning them sharp are very common tools for um, making uh, sort of thicker sounds, definitely. Um, so particularly for bass sounds and for lead sounds. If you're trying to make a sound a bit thicker, you can always try detuning one of the oscillators. Okay, so I am just going to turn down oscillator one and two. The next one that we're going to talk about here is the sub oscillator. So um, a sub oscillator is quite a common thing on uh, most synthesizers, and as the name suggests, it's an oscillator that is pitched below uh, oscillator one. Usually, usually they're they're sort of locked in in tune to oscillator one, uh, but they're designed to be at a um, a lower pitch, so it's just to thicken up the sounds. So on this particular uh, synth, uh, it's uh, fixed as a triangle wave. Some synthesizers will allow you to uh, change what waveform it is on this but uh, to hear it on its own as I turn it up it's just a, a lower waveform you can also choose how much um, how, how lower it is tuned from the main oscillator so at the moment this is on one octave below the main oscillator you can also take it two octaves down so the main effect on that one if I bring back up oscillator one if you listen as I bring in the sub oscillator the sound thickens out So it's really helpful when you're making bass sounds, for instance. Um, lastly, we've got a noise oscillator on here, which we can choose uh, either a white, uh, white noise or pink noise, which is a bit of a different tone to it. On its own, it's not very exciting. However, you can use it uh, uh, quite effectively to create things like uh, you know, fake snare sound. So if you want to get a synthesized snare sound by sculpting the sound, you can get it to that. You can also, uh, using the filters, sculpt it to say uh, make kind of wind sounds. And they're just really useful, actually, and uh, again, very common on all synthesizers. So uh, that covers most of the controls that you'll find on um, uh, an oscillator section. Uh, but for now, we're going to move on to the amp section.